Hi, my name's Claire Harrison. I'm a haematologist at Guy's and St Thomas's, which are two hospitals based in central London. I've got a special in interest in MPNs and today I'm going to be talking about can roxolitinib replace hydroxyurea as a frontline therapy for PV. I think that um, in considering this question it's really interesting to reflect back and remember that actually we haven't had a new therapy for PV patients in the front line for a long time. Currently the majority of patients with PV would all of them should be having aspirin or an equivalent control of their raised hematocrit with venesection and then for selected high risk patients we would offer them the option of either a form of interferon or hydroxyurea, otherwise known as hydroxycarbamide. More recently, we have um, seen the development of roxolitinib, a targeted JAK1 and JAK2 inhibitor, um, which is approved for patients who are resistant or intolerant to hydroxyurea, so in the second or earlier line. So I think there's a few things for consideration in just talking about this subject. First, it, um, are there patients, should we now all be treating all patients with PV with a drug in the front line? And this is something that we've been talking about increasingly. But I would say that for the most part, most of us wouldn't treat all of our PV patients with a drug such as hydroxyurea or ruxolitinib or even interferon unless they met criteria for high-risk disease or there are a few other exceptions. Um, and they would be, for example, a patient requiring excessive phlebotomy, a patient with a rising white cell count, perhaps a patient with a lot of symptoms, and then a trial of therapy might be useful and or, for example, a patient who has a cardiovascular risk factor. But increasingly, there is some evidence that if we treat and lower the jack allele burden, which I'll come to in a moment, we can potentially alter later events in the disease course. And so perhaps a topic for another day, should all um, PV patients be treated with the drug, regardless if they're low risk or high risk? But for today, I want to refine the topic a bit to say, should we use ruxolitinib instead of hydroxyurea as a frontline therapy for high-risk patients? So the answer is no for low-risk patients. So for high-risk patients, I would say this is still an experimental question, um, but we would want to use a drug that we know is effective at controlling the blood count, reduces the symptom burden and reduces the risk of thrombosis. And we have plenty of, of evidence that roxolitinib can certainly control the blood count in the second line setting and improve symptoms in the second line setting. So there's no reason to think that it couldn't do that in the front line setting. Recently, we published a study uh, called Magic PV, which um, assessed um, ruxolitinib long-term therapy in the second line setting. And I think this is a relevant study to discuss today because it shows, one, the effectiveness of ruxolitinib in the long term, demonstrates that this drug in the second line setting where there is a higher risk of events reduces the rate of thrombosis, which is another important tick for a frontline drug, if you like. And then we also looked then at um, longer term complications with this drug. So in the study, we found that we did see reductions in jack allele burden over the long time term with ruxolitinib as well as with other therapies, and that these correlated with benefits for patients such as overall survival, progression-free and thrombosis-free survival. So we're taking that study further and I think this is the way that I would answer this question, is we really need to do a study taking ruxolitinib into the frontline setting now and comparing it with agents such as hydroxyurea and interferon to see what the benefit is for patients. 
because any drug that we use in the front line, we really need to have 10, 15, 20, 25 years worth of data for safety. And a concern with ruxolitinib, of course, is immune suppression, risk of infections, which may be cumulative, and also a risk of skin cancer. Of course, that's also a concern with hydroxyurea, but we don't know what the relative risks are. So my answer is ruxolitinib could replace um, these agents as a frontline therapy, but it should be um, demonstrated in a clinical trial. Thanks for listening.